This week we're going to look at projectile motion. I'll sometimes refer to this as ballistic trajectories. Projectiles are just objects that are acted on only by the force of gravity. In general, projectile motion involves some sort of horizontal motion in addition to the free fall motion. Free fall can be rising, it can be falling, it can be going up and then coming back down. The same equations apply to all those possible situations. The principal characteristic of ballistic trajectories is that the acceleration is g downward. That means its vertical component is 9.8 meters per second squared in the down direction. The horizontal component of acceleration is zero. So we're allowing only the force of gravity. We're not allowing any forces like drag. One really nice thing for solving this kind of problem is that the vertical and horizontal motion of the ballistic object are completely independent and can be treated separately. So we have a set of equations for the horizontal motion and a set of equations for the vertical motion and they don't affect each other. Now they're related, they're linked through the time. We can find where it is vertically in time, where it is horizontally in time, and relate those to each other, but one doesn't directly affect the other. Given what we know, that the acceleration is zero in the horizontal direction, down in the vertical direction with a constant value of g, then we can construct equations of motion for the x and y directions. And that's what this slide will do. It's gonna look kind of busy, it's going to get full, but it's nothing that we haven't seen already. In the horizontal direction, the motion is just constant velocity motion. In the vertical direction, it's just constant acceleration motion. So we'll start with the x direction. The x component of acceleration is zero. Therefore, the x component of velocity, v sub x, is just what it was initially. That's the v zero sub x. v zero meaning at the initial time. So the x component of velocity stays the same throughout the ballistic trajectory. The actual x-coordinate is whatever the initial x-coordinate was, that's the x sub zero, plus the x-component of velocity times the time. It'll sometimes be useful to talk about the angle of the velocity vector, or the direction of the velocity vector, specified as an angle, conventionally alpha, that we can use any symbol we want. In the normal trigonometric convention, the x-component of velocity will just be the magnitude of velocity times the cosine of this angle alpha. In the next slide I'll show a diagram what this means. The y component of acceleration is just the gravitational field downward. The y component of velocity is changing because the y component of acceleration is non-zero. So the y component of velocity is just the initial y component of velocity plus the acceleration times time. Here the acceleration is minus g, so the plus acceleration is minus g. The actual y position, which we're talking about the height of the object, is its initial height, y0, plus the initial velocity in the y direction times time, and then the term for the acceleration, the minus one half gt squared. That's just the standard constant acceleration equation, though here we've substituted minus g for the acceleration. The y component of velocity at any time is just the magnitude of the velocity times the sine of the angle alpha. So here the actual velocity vector we can specify in several ways and we should be able to convert between these ways. Commonly we'll specify it as the x and y components v sub x and v sub y or as a speed v and a direction alpha. The speed, the magnitude of the velocity, is just the square root of the sums of the squares of the two components x and y. And again we're specifying that for all these equations the y direction is vertically up, the x direction is horizontal, generally to the right, because the plus y direction is 90 degrees counterclockwise of the plus x direction, and we're specifying the angle alpha counterclockwise from the positive x-axis. So let's look at a little bit of the strategy of how we address ballistic trajectory problems. Again, the components, x and y direction, are referring to alpha being the angle above the horizontal and the x and y components are the cosine and the sine of that angle. So here's what we're referring to. If we have some velocity v at some angle alpha above the horizontal, the x and y components are perpendicular to each other and they're defined in the conventional way. In general, the way you solve a ballistics problem, though there are many different types of ballistic problems, most of the time what you need to do is find the flight time most of the time the way that we're going to solve this 
is using the height equation, delta y equals v naught in the y direction times t minus one half gt squared. So you want to find out what that particular height change is that you're interested in. Invert that to solve for t. Once you've got t, then you can plug the t into the x equation. There's all sorts of problems that we can ask, and in future videos we'll look at some of those different types of problems and how we can address them.